Some important ins and outs in the 2024 presidential campaign, namely New Hampshire Republican Governor Chris Sununu says he's staying out, but former Vice President Mike Pence is officially getting in, filing paperwork with the Federal Election Commission ahead of a formal announcement at Wednesday's CNN Town Hall. Also expected to declare this week, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott himself a Republican hopeful. He made headlines for a contentious moment today on The View. Here's some of it, which comes several weeks after co-host Joy Behar, Sonny Haas, and Whoopi Goldberg made comments suggesting that Scott does not understand or acknowledge systemic racism. Senator Scott also got booed when talking about candidate Ron DeSantis and his battle with Disney. One of the reasons why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today, that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I think Disney and Ronnie have been in a combat zone for a number of months over what I thought was the right issue as it relates to our young kids and what they're being indoctrinated with. I thought he started off on the, wrong, on the right foot on that issue. It is uh, 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 no, 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 not here. I'm sorry, sir. Do not boo. This is the view. We accept we don't have to believe everything people say, but you cannot boo people here, please. You cannot do it. A busy day in the presidential race. Joining us, CNN political commentator, South Carolinian Bakari Sellers, also Mark McKinnon. He's a columnist for the Daily Beast and served as a campaign media advisor to former President George W. Bush. Uh, Bakari, you heard a little bit of Senator Scott's uh, perspective there. Um, what do you make of it? Well, I, I think it was actually a good political strategy to kind of go into the belly of the beast. Um, I think that uh, Senator Scott uses, and I, I, I love Senator Scott. We're, we're friends, I would like to believe. I served with him for four years in the South Carolina legislative body. Um, and I, as I like to say, I would give Senator Scott a kidney. I just would never vote for him. But I think today is, was a good day to show you how nimble he is. Mm -hmm. um, I think he has a hard time because he has an amazing story. He believes his story to be the story of America. However, he himself acknowledges that he is here because he's a miracle. That in itself means that there is some basic tenets of systemic racism in the country. He refuses to acknowledge it. And I think that's... Is that a political thing, do you think, or is it a, a, an actual belief? Oh, that's a good question, Anderson. I think it's a combination of both. I think for him, it, it, it may be a belief. I think for Nikki Haley, it's probably more of a calculation. Regardless of whatever the foundation for that belief is, I think that is dangerous. I think when you acknowledge yourself to be, I am here because I am an exception, I am here because I am a miracle in this country, then th that in and of itself means that uh, there are some issues that hold other people who look like you back. Mm. Mark, w what's the lane for Tim Scott or Nikki Haley to become president? Is it to try to stay in the good graces of Trump as long as possible or his base while getting established Republic Republicans and independents? Well, I, I think the lane is the lane where you, you appeal to Republicans who uh, want a normal Republican party again and <laughs> want to put Trump in the rear view mirror. Now, I, I think, first of all, Nikki Haley is a very deft campaigner, did a great job on your town hall. Uh, showed her experience, showed her unflappability, and just, just showed she's kind of a normal Republican, a little bit of a throwback. Now, you know, is that going to appeal to, to Trump-based voters? Probably not, uh, but but there's room for others in this race. And and Tim Scott, by the way, has a has a a lot of potential appeal for Iowa, and and Iowa, as we know, can completely shake up this race. And you know, what people should be focusing on is not the national polls, but what's happening in Iowa. And Tim Scott's got a very sunny, Reagan, George Bush, compassionate, conservative, optimistic kind of message. And by the way, the thing I like about uh, that is an interesting debate on the issue that, that Bakari was talking about, that we'll talk about uh, during this election. But what I like that he's doing is that contrary to DeSantis and Trump, who want to, who claim that they are victims and their voters are victims of everything, Tim Scott's saying, I'm not a victim. And I like that. And I think a lot of Americans like that. They like that kind of Reagan, you know, uh, I, I, you know, you can be anything in this country. Now, again, that's a debate we can have and whether or not it's fair to everybody, but it's a good message and it appeals to, you know, old time establishment Republicans and people out on an island like me. Is that enough? I don't know. But it could be enough to, to break through in Iowa. And once that happens, the deck gets reshuffled. Yeah, I mean, Booker, with the exception of Governor DeSantis, the former president has been, I mean, relatively hands-off and even complimentary with Tim Scott, uh, Nikki Haley, 
clearly he sees it as a benefit to him to have as many people as possible in this race. Well, the problem that most Americans don't realize, or most Republicans don't realize, it's a structural problem within the Republican Party. They didn't go back and change the structure of their primaries. So basically, when somebody wins the primary, even if they win it with 25 or 30 percent of the vote, they, they get all of those uh, delegates to, to be the next nominee for president. So the more people who are in the race, the more it benefits Donald Trump. I would, I would also say that there is no benefit to Donald Trump for going after somebody, as, as, as Mark said, with the disposition of somebody like Tim Scott. People like Tim Scott. He's genuinely likable. You feel like, although you may disagree with him, he's in it because he believes in what Abraham Lincoln called the better angels of our nature. It's very difficult to go after him. Now, I think when he has people come in the race like Mike Pence, who I believe is getting in the race soon, or somebody like Chris Christie, he won't have a choice because they're going to be throwing punches at him. I also, uh, David Axelrod said it last night, and I agree with him, I don't think that Donald Trump's going to engage much. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to debate much. I think it would be silly for him, too, because he's just that far ahead. And if Donald Trump wins, I would love to hear what Mark says, but if Donald Trump wins Iowa, the rest of this is academic. I mean, he will be the nominee. Mark, do you think it makes any sense for uh, Trump to debate or to engage? Uh, well, listen, I think it makes sense for him to debate because he, he dominates every debate that he's in and just crushes everybody. I mean, we saw that in 2016. I don't think he needs to engage with the other candidates. I mean, it only elevates them when he does. But I think Chris Sununu had the right message today. And, you know, what he said, I mean, first of all, he's going to have more impact on this race by getting out than staying in. New Hampshire now is in play. And, and, and I, like Iowa, you know, this race can, can, be, can, be, can be completely rearranged. Just, you know, ask the guy who lost to John McCain by 19 points after coming in there in first place with George W. Bush in South Carolina, turning around in, in like a 30-point uh, changeover in uh, the course of 24 hours. So, but his point is the one that's right, which is, you know, you can't, the more people in the race, the more it helps Trump. And so people like Sununu are getting out because the last thing that they want is, is, is Trump to emerge as the, uh, the nominee. And clearly, I mean, Bakari, uh, Chris Christie uh, is gearing up for confrontation I mean, based on his, his public comments. Uh, DeSantis is increasingly getting into it. Do you think it's necessary? Um, do you think it's, it's, do you think that's wise so soon? So I, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theory theorist, but I do have a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I think that there were some donors who... By the way, every conspiracy theorist says they're not a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. The world is flat, but no. <laughs> okay. So I think people got together and said, look, uh, Chris Christie, go out and do to Donald Trump what you did to Marco Rubio. I mean, Kamikaze Christie is coming in with one mission. There's no way in hell Chris Christie believes he can be president of the United States. I just do not... I, I, I think he has a, a better grasp on reality. I think he has one job, one task, and that is to take. Well, by the way, I would just point out. I think grammatically, you're wrong. Just, I think he certainly believes he could could do the job. It's just a question oh, just whether he could get quit, elected. Correct. That, that's, that's absolutely Maybe correct. Maybe that's what you're saying. Yeah, that, that is exactly what I'm saying. Uh, however, I would also say that he's just here for one task, and that is to take on Donald Trump. He is going to be a bull in a china shop. He's going to be fun to watch. And unlike Mike Pence, I mean, even Nikki Haley last night, I think she mentioned Trump's name one time in the town hall, maybe right. two times. Um, he's going to take a full frontal approach to Donald Trump. Right. Corey Sellers, Mark McKinnon, great to have you on. Thank you.